Chapter 4, Learning Objective 2, Explain and Prepare a Classified Balance Sheet. When we talk about a classified balance sheet, we're not referring to top secret James Bond or Donald Trump type of documents. We're simply referring to a balance sheet that's classified into meaningful groups and categories. Here's the start of a classified balance sheet showing the major categories you'd see on just about any organization's balance sheet. Notice first that in the title, we actually don't call it a classified balance sheet, but rather simply a balance sheet. As accountants, we know that the balance sheet should be properly classified into sections. For example, on the left, comprising assets, we can have current assets and long-term assets, which include long-term investments, property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. On the right, we have the categories of current and long-term liabilities, and a general category for equity. If we get more detailed, we can see how our current assets includes items like cash, accounts receivable, etc. Current assets are those that are expected to be converted into cash or consumed within one year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. Current assets are often reported in order of liquidity, which simply means how easily they can be converted to cash and are reported before non-current assets. Specifically, current assets can include cash on hand, currency, bank deposits, checks and money orders, short-term investments that are easily convertible into cash, accounts and notes receivable that are due within one year, inventory that's expected to be sold within one year, supplies expected to be consumed during the next year, and prepaid expenses that will expire within the next year. After current assets, we have non-current assets, which are resources that will be useful for more than one year. They're often referred to as long-term assets or even fixed or capital assets, though those terms aren't used that much anymore. Comprising part of property, plant, and equipment, often referred to as PPE, we have land, which is a non-depreciable asset, building, equipment, and truck, each paired up with its own accumulated depreciation contra asset. So the building, for example, had an original cost of $90,000, and up to December 31st, 2023, there's an accumulation of depreciation of $3,500, resulting in a net carrying value, or net book value, of $86,500. All the other assets are reported in the same way. Non-current assets can also include long-term investments that are held for more than one year, such as notes receivable, shares, bonds and also intangible assets that have no physical form, such as copyrights, patents, trademarks, or franchises. On the right, as part of current liabilities, we have accounts payable, and the current portion of notes payable and income taxes payable. All of these liabilities will be paid within the next year. Current liabilities can also often include accrued liabilities, such as interest payable and wages payable, short-term notes payable or current portion of long-term notes, like we see here, the principal portion of anything basically that's due within 12 months, and even unearned revenue. Non-current liabilities are comprised of obligations that will require payment in more than one year. For Big Dog, we have the long-term portion of the note payable and could have other items such as long-term portions of bank loan, mortgage payable, or even bonds. And last, we have equity that consists of share capital and retained earnings. As always, our balance sheet assets must balance to our liabilities plus shareholders' equity.